On the line with us is John Fugelsang, political commentator, comedian, host of Tell Me Everything weekdays from 2 to 5 on Sirius XM Insight Channel 121. His website, johnfugelsang.com and sexyliberal.com because Mm -hmm. the Sexy Liberal Comedy Tour featuring John and Stephanie Miller is coming to a city near you this Friday and Saturday. They'll be in Wisconsin, in Madison at the Barrymore Theater. And for tickets, you go to barrymorelive.com. John, welcome. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for talking up the tour. It's sort of like the <laughs> blue-collar tour for smart moral people. There you go. <laughs> my, my pleasure. So uh, so you're, you're the host of Tell Me Everything. Tell me everything. Well, I, I do a show over here uh, on Sirius XM that combines politics and comedy with, uh, with culture and music and parenting and lifestyle and what have you. And uh, it's, as you know, a pretty rich time for political comedians. Um, when God closes a Michelle Bachman door, he opens a big Donald Trump window. And we've been having a very, very good time this season. So I'm really great that we're going back on the road and that we're launching uh, the Stephanie Miller tour, of course, uh, up in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, that's where the tour first began five years ago, the first time we did it. And it's always a pleasure to perform for all the people, all the private citizens who are working so hard to make Scott Walker a private citizen citizen so uh i'm really glad we're going back there there you go and and uh you know what is the state of things in wisconsin right now i understand scott walker is continuing to try to tear things apart have you have you done any research on that and prep for for showing up well, yeah, you know, and I, I look forward to uh, the greatest thing about going to a place like Wisconsin is the week of the show, people are writing you all the time to tell you the latest egregious examples of, right. of what Walker's done. And I kind of want to, uh, I have a bone to pick with the people of Wisconsin. If they could have kept quiet how awful he was, we might still have his comedically rich presence in the GOP presidential campaign. So I'm a bit mad at those Wisconsinites for being so moral. They they tipped off the rest of the country. Um, but, you know, uh, for me, from labor, labor's the tip of the iceberg with Scott Walker. I mean, he's another one of these guys who passed this draconian uh, abortion bill. When he did it, it was on a Friday leading up to the 4th of July weekend two years ago. So he knew it would get no coverage and also because he knew it would get overturned in the courts right away. But it wouldn't stop him from being able to send out in mailers that he passed one of the harshest abortion laws in Wisconsin's history. Uh, He won't be mentioning it was completely draconian and got struck down within weeks. But that's the kind of honesty we've come to expect from a guy who can't recall caring about the workers of Wisconsin. Fortunately, the workers of Wisconsin cared about recalling Scott Walker. Yeah. What do you make of Donald Trump? Here here we, here we, you have somebody who at various times has said that uh, we should have a national health care system, uh, maybe even single payer, who's talked about blowing up our trade deals and going back to a tariff-based trade system, who uh, has just come right out and said George W. Bush didn't keep us safe and, and uh, you know, uh, 9-11 lays at his feet and, and he lied to us about Iraq. I mean, it's I, I, when I'm live tweeting the Republican debates, uh, you know, I, I, I inevitably reach a point where I'm in my tweets. I'm like, my head is hurting. Donald Trump is making sense. How can this be? Well, ex- exactly. I mean, it's wonderful. You left out the fact that he'll go into football stadiums and say we should tax hedge fund managers. Exactly. Yeah. And watch the crowds go crazy while Grover Norquist clutches his pearls somewhere yes. far off in a bunker. Yes. Uh, you know, Tom, you're the smartest guy in radio. And, you know, you are aware of the irony that Donald Trump is the most horrible conservative candidate without being the most horribly conservative candidate. And if there's one thing we've learned from his South Carolina win, you know, this big pro-military state after he came down there and just trashed George W. Bush, uh, it's that when you look at Trump, as well as looking at the rise of Carly Fiorina and Ben Carson, and they were both very competitive at one point, it really shows a valuable lesson for the Democrats, which is that nobody hates Republican politicians more than Republican primary voters. And for many decades, they've cultivated this certain low information voter base, not all of them. You know, you know, the expression, not all racists, uh, not all Trump supporters are racist, but uh, all racists are supporting Trump. And for years, they've built this giant Frankenstein monster uh, built by Fox News, built by the RNC. And now the monster has gone into the village and found another mad scientist he likes a lot more. And they can't control the beast anymore. I keep thinking, Tom, of Howard Dean in the 50 state strategy and the unsung hero of the 2008 campaign when the Democrats went into the red states and actually took the fight to Alabama and Mississippi and said, how much of these guys helped you? You can definitely see a rise 
a, a similarity in the rise of Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, not in terms of ideology, but how they're both protest votes, how they're both men who didn't actually belong to their political party only a short time ago. With Trump, it's personality. With Bernie, it's policy. But it just goes to show the discontent with the two-party duopoly. And uh, I'd like to see the Democrats take advantage of, uh, of this discontent in the party. I, I don't see Trump becoming the president, but he's going to make it really interesting for a while. And I'm, I'm too young to know what a, what a brokered convention is like, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see the GOP just go for all-out civil war with the guy. Yeah, which, which will be fascinating. <laughs> another, another reality TV show. I, would, I, I love I, him. I mean, the media doesn't get it. Voting for Donald Trump, Tom, is the closest most Americans will ever get to voting for Boss Hogg from Dukes of Hazard. You know, <laughs> I mean, if Mr. Burns and the Simpsons and a pro wrestler had said and gave birth to a child, it would be Donald Trump. Yeah. And orange lives matter. You know, you can't write the guy off. Yeah, yeah. I would I would take uh, exception to your uh, arguing that votes for Bernie and for Trump are protest votes, because it seems that there's a large plurality of the American electorate that is not voting for them because they don't like the rest of the establishment they're voting for them because they like what they're saying they i yeah. I, I i you know m m protest voters tend to be you know uh, sour and angry and you know protesting well, I, mean, well, I don't think these are protest fair, votes we, i think we, these are aspirational votes bernie's the greatest guy in the world but we've seen some bernie fans be be less than gracious at times yes. uh, same with hillary fans as well and i don't like the whole bernie hillary beef tom i mean these two sides need each other you yep. know I mean, Bernie without Hillary supporters is McGovern 72. Hillary without Bernie supporters is Mondale 84. Uh, we have to bring Jimmy Carter and Bono and Desmond Tutu in to, to negotiate a peace agreement between these two factions because I don't like watching mom's friends fight grandpa's friends. You know what I mean? It's, right. it's like watching Margaret Thatcher fight Fivish Finkel. It's, it's, it's not pretty. <laughs> They, they need each other. But um, I would point out that Bernie Sanders was always an independent who caucused with the Democrats and only changed his party affiliation a, a short time ago. That's what I mean. You know, he, he's not the traditional uh, uh, major party nominee prototype. And in right. that sense, there are some parallels with him and Trump. Yeah. Except that Trump has been a reality game show host while Bernie's been actually doing this for the working people for decades. Actually, Trump's yeah. another example of a guy who, who's on the top of the economic ladder telling people in the middle of the economic ladder trying to hang on they should blame all their problems on the undocumented workers who are propping up the bottom of the ladder. You know, our, our border has a, a big help wanted sign next to the keep out sign. And Trump, by making these people think he's actually going to build a wall across thousands of miles of border, across rivers and deserts and forests, private and commercial property, he's going to build a giant wall so the people of Mexico don't have to look at our crumbling roads and bridges. Um, <laughs> <sighs> that would work. That yeah, would work. You know, I mean, look, I, I almost want Trump to be elected just so people can see that he was lying to them all along. I mean, and, and Trump supporters, the most fervent ones, are the same guys who were berating you years ago for questioning President Bush. Now they're berating us all over again for questioning President Trump. He's not going to deport 11 million people. It's it's not going to happen. And uh, all the xenophobia in the world uh, isn't going to change the fact that his unfavorable numbers are much higher than Hillary Clinton's. He's reached the ceiling of his of his uh, appeal. And, you know, I, I just can't wait to see. Uh, I mean, the guy fought the pope, for God's sakes, Tom. He fought the pope. His holiness versus his ass holiness. You know, it, it, it can't get any more ugly. And yet he keeps confounding the media. And it's it, it's almost a pleasure to watch Reince Priebus sticking his head in the oven every day. Yeah. My, my apologies to anybody who might have been offended by the uh, obscenity that you dropped on the air there. Um, I apologize. I think, oh, I'm so sorry. I think we dumped it off uh, commercial radio. Um, so anyhow, John Fugelsang, political commentator, comedian, host of Tell Me Everything, weekdays 2 to 5 on Sirius XM Insight Channel 121, where you can swear on the air. <laughs> John. My apologies to all of Tom's listeners. You are the best audience in radio. Thank you for having me. Thank you, John. Great to have you with us. Uh, at John Fugelsang, you can tweet him. We'll be back. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.